If you like what I make and want to help out the channel, make sure you subscribe to it, turn on notifications, leave a like on the video below and comment as well. Thanks for your support guys. Hey there YouTube, welcome back to the video. Another day, another video for you guys. This is the first Sanctum War. Now, let me start by saying that I kind of messed up. Uh, I intended to record from the beginning and make like a cool video. Ended up kind of being more of a pain in the ass than anything because uh, my computer kind of crapped out halfway through, like two minutes before the thing started. And I realized today that with the Galaxy S8, it's pretty much impossible to record gameplay without destroying the aspect ratio, like the bars that you see on my PUBG game, which is kind of annoying and frustrating and even more annoying. But anyway, let's get into the Sanctum War. So what ended up happening is that as part of the Kingdom Evolution, uh, we ended up getting to the day where the Sanctum War was finally started. Uh, it pretty much happened a couple of days ago. The Sanctums were open for taking. As you can see, Sanctum of Hope belongs to SKM. Spoiler alert, we did up and end up winning the game. But, well, the Sanctum of Hope itself. As you can see, we're getting rallied right now but by Nia. Nia is a guild that's pretty close to us that like a couple of minutes or maybe an hour before this started actually were able to compete. And let me explain what that means. Basically what they did is that to make things interesting, and this is something I love about this game, that's better than Lord of Mobile by the way, is that Sanctum of Hope or any other Sanctum can only be contested by the alliances that are adjacent to the tile thing square of the Sanctum of Hope or of any, on, any other Sanctum for that matter. So what ended up happening is that some guilds had no, or alliances better said, had no contestion at all. No one, no one contested it. They just got it. And other alliances like us kind of got screwed along the way and had to fight for it. Thankfully, um, spoiler alert again, we won. And as you can see, drunken uh, flagpole running across with his uh, with his scout on our screen, and Achilles has this rally going out there. Uh, we were trying to kind of destroy their flag while uh, this was going on. So the the flag is pretty much what tells you that it essentially says where your territory is. The more flags you have, the better. In this specific rally, we actually lost. As you can see, we're out of the the thing, and we're all like crying back home but we end up retaking it pretty quickly and uh, i had to go back and look really quickly how many heals i needed 1100 uh, troops wounded is not that big of a deal no losses thankfully so we just heal up and on the way i was like screw it you know what might as well train some more take care of some things and then go look at um, how we rally this into this thing again right so the cool thing about this is that the sanctums are not the only thing that is open like you can see right here i show the um the what you might call it the monument scroll thing with the kingdom of pompey's history and you can see that we reached a situation where uh, after defeating 500,000 barbarians i think it was or if I'm not mistaken, it was the one after that, the 3500 governors entering the Iron Age, this one right here. It pretty much unlocked the sanctums. You can see uh, it's, uh, it has like the unlock sanctum thing. After the end of this chapter, whether or not the objective is reached, all the sanctums will be active and available for occupation within 24 hours. To attack a sanctum, alliances must have a territory that is adjacent to it. Now, again, I explained that's the cool thing. And there aren't only sanctums, there are apparently altars, level one passes, level two passes, level three passes, which are like these gates that help you get through the map rather than going way around and stuff like that. And you can see right here that um, our territory was adjacent to it and there's the flag where they were adjacent to this sanctum as well. This is not the best sanctum there is, it's like a gathering speed one. But uh, they are not all of them that good. Uh, I guess the Sanctums are kind of like a, a small thing. I saw the Altars are super strong. Research speed, uh, attack, stuff like that. A bunch of like buffs that are actually like useful. Gathering is pretty cool. 5% gathering speed. But it's not really something I think is worth, worth losing troops for. Uh, yeah, we pretty much kind of looked around. Tried to see, you know, what we're doing. What's going on. Uh, I... 
waited for my troops to arrive back and I was like, you know, it's kind of weird that we're not rallying this. So this is true, let's go look at the map. Uh, you can see that there is a, the guild right next to us, as I showed, that had no access to the Sanctum and they wouldn't fight for it. You can see another couple of Sanctums like right there, where there was no, no one contested it. It just, one guild was close to it and they just got into it, the Sanctum of Courage. And that was that. That's all they had to do. Uh, that, that's pretty neat and it's kind of smart. You can see that the way they did their territory is like kind of straight towards the Sanctum. Uh, I don't know whether our strategy of having like a, a big mass, a mass of land versus like a long thing towards targets is better. You can see on the bottom left of the screen that there's like this purple guys going all the way and then there's like a, like a, a, a um, thing like going like that, like a territory, two pieces of territory right next to each other at the bottom left, which are the territories they aligned for that gate. You can see the gate right there. And I kind of don't can't really zoom in because it's stupid stuff. Uh, so we see another sanctum being contested, like not really being contested, right? It's just there. At some point, I'm like, you know, it's kind of weird that we're not rallying. What is going on? This is like, there is no way we're not rallying this, right? I was like, oh, I didn't notice that we were. So I send a little march, you know, got to do our part, got to win this war. And uh, it's like, you know, Drunken Pole put like a thing that we need to uh, attack, pretty much send troops into here. And then I see him soloing this thing, right? And this guy is a beast, man. This guy is a beast because we're setting up a rally, right? I'm like, yo, I just joined the rally. What's going on? And this guy is pooping on these kids. Poor kids, man. He's just destroying them. And uh, spoiler alert, what you're about to see is that he takes the Sanctum for himself, without us. I was like, well, shit, if that's the case, then I might as well pull out of the rally and send reinforcements, which is what we ended up doing. But the neat thing is that just like in KVK and Lords Mobile, you know, it uh, not in KVK, sorry, in uh, Wonder Wars, it resets and you have like a three hour timer that you need to hold the the sanctum or else it resets i saw a, a cool thing where like in kingdom 58 there were two sanctums that took more than a day to actually be one which was a bit strange a bit scary but actually it wasn't that big of a deal it wasn't a battle of the giants like i'm used to in lords it was more like a battle of the weaklings where they just wouldn't give up it's not that people got destroyed, but it was more like I am more stubborn and therefore I will have it. Which I like about this game. Again, it's like, why would you lose thousands, hundreds of thousands of troops, hundreds of dollars worth of progress to get a stupid thing that resets every couple of days for a little bit of a buff? It makes no sense. But in here, because if, well, you have a good hospital level, which most of us will have, you will most likely not lose troops. You'll just have to heal them. And some of them go into slightly wounded, which I still haven't figured out what that means. But it's like, you can you can use them, but not right now. Maybe, I guess it's when they come back. I, ha I don't really know, but they don't die. I have zero deaths so far, which is really cool. Did this verification reward thing really quickly. I you know it's like stupid sw quick thing. You can see all the white, like uh, blue uh, line thingies that I'm showing all of us reinforcing the um, the sanctum this guild actually gave up after a while because you know we were too strong and yeah that was the sanctum war it wasn't something crazy but i like the fact that there are events that are based on time in this game like you know that in like two weeks the altars will open in your kingdom so you got to start building up and getting ready for it moving your territories around planning where to position your alliance so you have the most resources someone from across the map cannot take the sanctum that you are so close to, which is awesome. It means that like there is no like massive alliance that's super strong that's gonna take all the buffs and everything and you're screwed. You'll always have something. They will contest though for the better ones. I'm showing you guys here a small battle report. This was one of the hits. I think this was the hit that we lost to, but as you can see, zero deaths, 40,000 uh, wounded, not that big of a deal. Anyway, guys, I'm going to close this up right here. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about Civilization, Rise of Civilization, if you started playing. 
join the game. Come play with me, man. Uh, those of you asking if you can apply to the guild, to the alliance, should apply. I don't, I can't necessarily tell you you'll get accepted, but try to apply. Why not? I'm the Gecko. I'm out of here. Thank you very much for all your support. Until the next time, peace.